not only was he born in the flesh, but he was manifest in the flesh. That That's a great revelation. And um, the greatest revelation in the Bible and the greatest revelation to mankind is none other than our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. He is the revelation. And he is the one that we look to for guidance and solace, for direction, for um, the strengthening of our minds. Amen. Uh, take care of those little fellows out there. Thank you. Hello, Miss Wanda. How are you today? Amen. Good that you're watching with us. We're still talking uh, about the prayer ministry of the church. Let me tell you that that is the greatest ministry. Um, and without prayer, we become misguided, misdirected, uh, misinformed, uh, uh, just uh, miseducated. Amen. And, and some of everything uh, we, we miss out on in life because we fail to pray. Amen. If you don't, and I, I, I might, I put it this way. If you don't plan to pray, then you plan to fail in the Christian walk of life. Amen. A failure to plan your prayer life, amen, is a plan for failure in your Christian walk. Um, no matter how prolific you may be without prayer or with little prayer, uh, you know, you could be much greater uh, with prayer. And so God, I believe that God, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is directing me, Apostle Claude L. White Sr., to begin teaching people that, uh, that godliness is important to him that we need to strive in this 21st century, men should strive for godliness. Every Christian man, woman, girl, boy, uh, should strive for godliness, strive to walk in the way of Christ. Hello, Sister Hayden, how are you? Hello, Sister Lucretia, how are you? Uh, God bless you all for tuning in. And so uh, this is one of the reasons why when um, I enter into ministry, I like to um, say that particular verse. I like to rehearse and recite it um, in the in first Timothy chapter three and verse six, uh, verse 16. Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. Amen. There is no argument uh, among uh, uh, church folk. Amen. And, uh, if there is, there ought not to be. There is no doubt. Um, and there are no conflicting issues about the greatness um, of the mystery of godliness. We, we, we as human beings often um, shrink from the idea of godliness. Guess what? There are some things that we, we, we don't shrink from. Uh, some of the nastiest people in the world, attitude-wise, and just plain... Um, moral, you know, 
morally nasty. We'll use the term cleanliness is next to godliness. Well, you know, in other words, they want to take a shower every day, two or three times a day sometimes. But that does not, that will not save you. That will not get you into heaven. Amen. You cannot walk through the kingdom doors because you use soap today. Or you use soap and water today. But we look to Jesus. Uh, as it is said in uh, Hebrew, we look to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. We look to him. And therefore, we ought to pray. Amen. Uh, we ought to pray, and we ought to pray much. Let's go back to Luke uh, chapter 18. Amen. There were some things that I want to say to you today, um, which I'd written down. And um, I felt a need to go into the um, idea of godliness. Those of us who have taken Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, for us, there is no option. There is, uh, if Jesus is your Lord, there is no option for you but to seek perfection. Amen. To seek to walk in the will of God. This is a transforming faith. The faith that we walk in. The faith of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, which he's given to us is a transforming faith. And when we talk about being baptized in his blood by faith. Washed in his blood by faith we are actually saying uh, uh, something very scientific and something very um, deep because the knowledge that we have concerning the blood today amen and 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 the, the word of God said it amen uh, eons ago that life is in the blood and so the life of Jesus Christ the godly life amen is in the blood of Jesus Christ it is in his DNA amen in in his DNA uh, there is no imperfection in him. And we not only strive to be like him, but we have been uh, adopted, amen, into this faith. And we are called to hold the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. Amen. In a pure conscience. We are called to hold the mystery. Amen. Uh, and we must believe that we are being transformed. Amen. So let's look at Luke chapter 18. And uh, we're going to talk some more about the ministry of prayer. Jesus gives us that parable in Luke chapter 18 to give us the idea that men are always to pray. And that is exactly what it says in the first verse. And he spake a parable unto them to this end toward that they might have this knowledge, that they might have this as the goal in their life, that men ought always to pray and not 
to faint. And that word to faint there means to give up, to um, pass out. Amen. Not to get weary. Not to uh, become uh, unconscious. We ought to always pray. And uh, therefore, I was saying to you that when we pray the covenant prayer, there are a number of things that happen to us by way of the transformation process that's going on uh, through our, through the Spirit of God, from the Spirit of God to, to you and I into our spirit. Amen. There is stuff being poured into our spirit out of the richness of the glory of God. And so Jesus tells us that we ought always to pray. And this is what he said, saying, there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came to him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. Now, she is the one praying to the judge who uh, is not afraid of man, a mouse, or God. She's praying. She's going, she's asking him for a vengeance for some offense that has been committed against her. And she has, amen, an adversary. Good morning. She has an adversary which um, has offended her, done her wrong, done evil, and she pleads toward the judge who is able to do something about it. Now, notice that she does not take it in her hand. She doesn't go and curse the people out. Amen. She does not destroy their property. But she goes to the authority, to the proper authority. And this teaches us that we ought to always go to God before we take something into our own hands. We need to talk to the Lord about it. We need to be sincere with the Lord. And I said on last week, we need to be persistent in our prayer life. We need to have a uh, prayer life that perseveres. And we need to be persistent in our praying toward God. If you are persistent, the Lord says you will have what you ask for. And so uh, we need to make sure that we always talk to God about adversar adverse, uh, adversarial situations. Then he goes on in, in fourth verses, and he would not for a while. In other words, the judge would not for a while. But afterwards, he said within himself, though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me. Uh, this persistent prayer is, is called importuning. Amen. And the matter may not be important to the person that you're going to talk to, but if, if it's important to you, Jesus says that you need to have persistence. Amen. So uh, oftentimes we think to ourselves, well, you know, I prayed and I prayed once and that ought to do it. But uh, uh, the Lord is saying to us that sometimes you have to go back again and again and again. Uh, and so we ought to be persistent and we need to persevere we need to have uh enduring strength you know as that song uh says that says uh 
when you've done all that you can, amen, everything that you know to do, then what do you do? You just stand. Amen. Keep standing in what you know is right. And uh, then we go on to verse uh, five. He says, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her. Amen. I will give her what she wants because she keeps bothering me. She keeps coming to me with the same thing. Now, he's not saying that God is like this. What he's saying is God is better than this judge. And this judge finally realizes that uh, he should avenge this woman. Or he finally has mercy. He finally has pity upon her. Amen. And so since she has pity, or rather the judge has pity, and, and the woman has uh, received uh, the benefit of his uh, pity, he goes on and he avenges her. He gives her what she wants, what she's prayed for. The Lord is better. Our God is better than this. God the Father is what? Better than this unrighteous judge. And Jesus says that he will answer us speedily. The verse, let's read those verses. And the Lord in verse 6. And the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge saith. And shall not God avenge? His elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them. Amen. In other words, even though God may uh, bear long, or he may um, sometimes, I, I won't use the term tarry, but sometimes God um, gives opportunity for repentance. <laughs> He gives opportunity for repentance of uh, those who we may be praying about. Amen. And he gives us opportunity also to pray aright. To pray uh, in, uh, in, in his will. To pray, to pray in accordance with the divine will. And because that is what the Apostle Paul says in Romans uh, 8, huh? Uh, we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose. Amen. And, and there are some things that we can know. Amen. We know that 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 things work together for good in other words when you pray if you don't get your prayer answered the first time go back again and again and again and again amen now the results of this is going to be that god is going to either he's going to manifest that which you need or ask for or he will tell you straight out, hey, you don't need that. That's not something uh, that you need to have in your life. Amen. And, and uh, will God deny? Yes, he will sometimes. He will say no. But that is the relationship that we want with our God. Amen. Uh, and uh, we want to always recognize that our God loves us, that God the Father loves us, and he will not give us a scorpion for an egg. Amen. He will not give us uh, a serpent, amen, for bread. He will give us the good things in life. Amen. Now, 
I said to you that um, in, in, uh, on last week that the spirit helps our infirmities. In other words, uh, and I'm going to read that to you out of Romans. In Romans chapter 8, verse 26, I want to start at 25. But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Amen. That's what I was telling you about. Sometimes we have to uh, wait with patience until we are ready for a prayer to actually be answered. And until we, <clears throat> excuse me, are praying, amen, in the will of God. Amen. Till we are praying with an understanding uh, and, uh, uh, and actually in the purpose of God. So he says, uh, we hope uh, and then we wait with patience. Likewise, in 26, likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Amen. In the areas of our weakness, the spirit helps. So it is, again, it is a need for us to pray. There is a need for us to pray. And I recommend to you that you pray the covenant prayer often throughout the day. Amen. That you pray the Our Father prayer often. Let me go on. Uh, but the Spirit help it. Uh, our infirmity, and likewise, the spirit help with our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Amen. The spirit prays and makes intercession for us. Amen. There is a place within your enter your inner sanctum sanctorium amen in the innermost part of your being there the spirit of god resides and there your spirit also resides and your spirit manifests the strength that is in your body from that place amen and your spirit Amen. Praise in a different language than you. And this is where we, we get the uh, much talked about uh, speaking in tongues or talking, amen, in an unknown tongue. Now, your spirit <clears throat> knows many languages. Amen. Some that are not even uh, earthly languages. But uh, that's another that's another subject for another day. And so uh, um, the spirit maketh intercessions for us with groanings, which cannot be uttered. He that searches the heart knoweth <clears throat> what is the mind of the spirit. Amen. Jesus Christ knows what what is in the mind of the spirit of God, as well as in our own spirit. He knows, amen. <clears throat> when he turns his attention toward us, he's not turning toward us in ignorance, trying to discover something. He uh, has uh, on the conscious of omniscience, omniscience and omnipot omnipotence amen and so uh with that uh, he can know all things at all times and so he maketh intercession for us the spirit of god makes what intercession for the saints amen let, uh, let me read it to you. 
But the Spirit itself making the intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered in verse 27. And he that searches the heart knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. According to God's will. The Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit that is imported to us, that is our comforter, our guide, our uh, uh, friend with us, walks with us, ministers to our needs, prays for us, intercedes for us according to the will of God. Not according to our will, but according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Amen. Do you want to see the will of God done? Then we ought to pray and we ought to pray right. And I recommend to you, amen, let's turn to uh, Luke chapter 11, amen. We were also dealing with that on last uh, Sunday. Luke chapter 11, uh, where the uh, actual prayer is. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place. When he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray. As John also taught his disciples to pray. Amen. We ought to pray. And he said unto them, when you pray, say our father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. As in heaven, so in earth. Again, even as the apostle Paul tells us, praying uh, with purpose, praying uh, for the purpose of God, all things work together for good to them, who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. To love the God, to love the Lord God is to seek his will. Amen. To seek for his will to be done. Amen. And so Jesus says, when you pray, say our father, which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done as in heaven, so on earth, so in earth. Amen. Now, there are many people who do say the prayer, say the Our Father prayer, they say the covenant prayer. But there are fewer people who actually pray the covenant prayer. Amen. To say the prayer or to recite the prayer is one thing, but to pray the prayer is another thing. And so when we pray the prayer, we, you know, we talked about posture, how we sit before God, how we actually, uh, what is our attitude toward God when we pray? All of that is a part of, uh, of, of your presence. You need to be present when you pray. You don't need to be absent-minded. Uh, you don't need to be um, half-sleeping on the job. You remember when Jesus was going through the passion 
and uh, getting ready to be offered up that he chose uh, Peter, James, and John to go with him. Uh, in fact, he had all of the disciples come with him as they went to the Garden of Gethsemane. And they all were there. But Jesus said to John and James and, and Peter, he said, you, you can come, come go with me a little further. Amen. And so they came with him. And notice that that he he chose three. Amen. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He said, you three come go with me. Amen. Yonder while I pray. And so he went a little further and he prayed himself. And he asked them to pray with him. Amen. Sometimes we think to ourselves, well, you know, just saying the prayer isn't enough. Well, it, it isn't. But to pray the prayer is enough. Amen. To pray the prayer often. To pray the covenant prayer often. Because this prayer, I said, it gives us it develops in us spiritual synchronicity. That is a, uh, a synchronicity with God, with the spirit of God, with, with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, with, with, with the one who has ascended on high. It gives us synchronicity. It gives us spiritual synchronicity. It puts us in sync with him okay and so i recommend that you pray the prayer often amen I, i'm i'm doing this at the urging of the spirit of god that we pray this prayer often for it uh it 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 it, it uh reveals to us it is a revelatory prayer it reveals to us uh, great things. Uh, after we have we said our Father, and we recognize that His His throne is in is the room of heaven, and we recognize that His name is to be honored. And you cannot just you cannot honor God's name by putting it out of your consciousness. Or, or by not saying his name. You know, well, I don't want to say the name. I don't want to take his name in vain. We think that taking his name in vain means, you know, you, you shouldn't say his name or you shouldn't call his name. But I need you to understand that we wear that name. Amen. That name is, is, a, is a part of who we are in the world the name Jesus, because we are disciples of Jesus Christ, the ascendant one, the one who is on high. We have to hold his name in honor. We need to recognize that that name is called upon us. Amen. Uh, and and those who are true disciples of Jesus Christ, amen, often call upon the name of the people, the name of God, amen, amen, blessing them with the benediction, amen. And you ought to say, amen, the name of Jesus, amen. Or you ought to say the name Jehovah, amen. Jehovah Shalom, amen. Jehovah Nisi, amen. Jehovah Rapha, amen. Uh, Jehovah Jireh. All of, of these uh, names of God and his authorities, his richness, his, his, his uh, abundance are, are um, revealed here in this prayer 
It is a most wonderful prayer. None better. Amen. And so we recognize that his name is holy. That means that we need to walk in a certain manner. We need to, we need to live the Christ life because that name is a part of who we are in the world. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Amen. You, you've been baptized, are you a baptized believer? Uh, have you been baptized, amen, uh, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Have you been baptized in the name of Jesus? Amen. Then you, then you are baptized into the kingdom of God. We, we, we often say that we, we are baptized into his death. We, 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 and, and we are washed, amen, in the blood of the lamb. Turn with me to uh, Revelation. I know we were dealing with the covenant prayer and we're going to get back to it. But turn with me to Revelation um, chapter 1, to the Revelation uh, in the, the, the rear of your Bible in chapter 1. Listen at what it says here. John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come and from the seven spirits which are before his throne and from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. He has made us kings and priests unto God, his Father. We are washed in his blood. Amen. Uh, the, 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 the blood of sin is washed away by the blood of righteousness. Amen. We receive the very DNA of Christ by faith. Amen. Are you listening? We receive the very DNA of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ by faith. That's what it means by being washed in the blood of the Lamb. Now, let's go back. Uh, he says that thy will be done as in heaven, so in earth. Thy will be done as in heaven, so in earth. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done as in heaven. So in earth. Now, we want the will of God to be done because his will is good. His will is right. Amen. God is not our enemy. God is not the adversary. He is not the destroyer. And so, we pray the prayer. Give us this day or give us day by day. Luke says day by day our daily bread. Give us day by day our daily bread. Amen. I need, just as I need to eat every day some bread or some and some meat and uh, to have <clears throat> a drink of water or some other beverage 
Amen. Just as I need those things, I also need a spiritual bread day by day. Amen. We need the word of God every day, not just once a week. And so we ought to pray and we ought to study the word of God. Give and forgive us our sins for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. Now that is deep. Forgive us our sins. We ask for forgiveness for God, from, from God for the things that we may have done or the, and also the things that we may not have done. Amen. You can sin by commission and you can also sin by omission. Some of us are, have omitted to pray. Some of us pray so little till it's ridiculous. We uh, many uh, in many churches, they have cut out, you know, the midweek prayer. Uh, there, and uh, back in uh, years ago, they used to have different prayer bands, prayer groups in the church, which prayed daily. We, we, we lost those wonderful, blessed things. Uh, there are still a few people that practice daily prayer and group prayer. We need to get back to doing the will of God. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us, oh my God. We also forgive everyone. Amen. That thing grabs you by your throat. Amen. And shakes you up. We also forgive everyone. Forgive us our sins. For as a matter of fact, God, we also forgive everyone who is indebted to us. Wow. Is that an indictment or a, or a, a, a confession? It is meant to be a confession, a, uh, an affirmation, but it can be an indictment if we are not what? Forgiving everyone who is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation. And the word here um, in the Greek is translated temptation, but it, it, it means to be tested. You know, Lord, how many of you like to take a test? Raise your hand. I can't see you, huh? Well, guess what? Amen. Amen. If, 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 if you... If you love to take a test, then then that's fine. Then you're daring and courageous. But most people don't like to take tests. And there are certain things that happen in our lives that come up in our lives. Uh, as a matter of fact, we, we invite those things into our lives. But through the prayer, we uninvite those things. We say to the Lord, lead us not into temptation, Lord. Don't, don't, you know. So we, we need to uninvite the devil. We need to uninvite the adversary. You're not welcome here. Amen. Only God, the spirit of God. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Again, uh, Jesus goes through a great scenario of telling a story 
about a man who uh, has a visitor who comes to him uh, and the visitor is hungry uh, and there's a friend. So, so he goes to another friend who's a neighbor and says, uh, hey, man, uh, wake up. I need something. I need some bread. Amen. And the fellow says, man, we sleep. There's no time out for that. I can't get up. But the guy keeps on knocking at the door. Hey, hey, uh, wake up, Jew, uh, uh, John, uh, 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 bro. Uh, uh, wake up. I need your help. A friend of mine just came. He's hungry. Been traveling a long way. He's weary. And I need to get something. He says, even though this guy who is a friend of his, he will not get up because he's a friend, but because he keeps on knocking at the door, importuning, he's persistent uh, about his knocking and begging. Hey man, I'm not, I can't go back without some bread. He says the guy would get up and give him as many loaves as he wants. And, and uh, I love the way that Jesus ends this um, aside story aside from his lesson. In the, in the last verse um, of this particular passage, he says, If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father Give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him. Now, you, I, I, I found a lot of people that go around talking, well, you don't have to ask the Lord for the Holy Spirit. But right there in Luke, it says, ask. How much more will God give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Amen. We need to also pray. For if you have the Holy Spirit, you ought to pray for refreshing. Amen. Pray for uh, uh, a a transforming in your life. Amen. And let the Holy Spirit work with you, and you work with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Be cooperative. God seeks such to. Um, enter into the kingdom, you know, daily. All right. Hello there, Brother Rick. How are you doing? Hello there, Sharia. How are you? Good to see all of you uh, by way of this modern technology. Now, God is inviting each of us to pray. And uh, we don't have to make up prayers. Amen. We can just say the Our Father prayer. And I recommend, amen, by way of the Spirit, that you say this prayer often. Amen. The prayer will begin to arouse uh, in your spirit a new awareness, a new understanding. And I, and I don't want to go as long as I did on, on last week. Amen. So we're going to stop right there. And I'm going to ask uh, Rashida to come and give you all of that good information about tithing and uh, about um, how to send in your tithes. Some of them you need to send in your tithes. Amen. And your offerings. And... Um, if you need, amen, I want you to, to send me a request. If you want this prayer book on the ministry of prayer in the church, send me uh, a request and I will get it to you. Amen. Come on, Rashida. She's looking mighty wonderful today also. Amen. Praise the Lord. She has a little cap on. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm also going to put these links inside of the comments below and inside of the YouTube comments below. The 
Uh, if you would like to traditionally mail your tithes in, you can mail it to the church P.O. Box 19575, Shreveport, Louisiana, 71129. Again, 19575, Shreveport, Louisiana, 71129. You can also do text to give. Let me give you the correct text to give. It's inside of my phone. I want to make sure all the money is going to the right place. Okay, let's see. 318-392-4848. 318-392-4848. And just a nugget, if you'd like to like save it in your phone, I have it saved in my phone. As a contact, it's text to give. It just make it easier for when you give. You just can press text to give, and it makes it just make it easier for you to give your offering your time. If you want to give through website, you can give it www.wisemenstillseekhim.org. And also, while I'm already up here, the radio station that Pastor White does, um, his. His Redeeming Love Radio Ministry on on Saturdays at 11.30 a.m. Uh, we get those text messages on Saturdays. I'm going to also send in the voting ledger. Um, the radio station is up for a Stella Award. We know that the Stella Awards are like the Grammy of the Gospel. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to also put the Stella Award um, information to vote inside of the comments. And I'm also going to text it. If you would like to be a part of getting the text messages that we have and just keep us abreast of what's going on and it just give all information that we have on different services, send your reminders in the morning about the service. If you'd like to be a part of that, you can just um, messenger um, either the Star Bethlehem NBC page or Pastor White, and we'll get your information and you'll be able to get this right at your fingertips and be able to just really press the link. But everybody have a good rest of your Sunday. Thank you. Thank you, Rashida. You're welcome. Now, I'm going to say this and, and, and we'll, we're going to pray and we will be going um I almost said going home. <laughs> I'm already at home. Amen. <laughs> uh, we, we, you, you will be free to go and do the things you want to do. Now, um, I'm, I'm making preparation for us to begin to meet in person at uh, the uh, Union Masonic Temple on Hearn Avenue. And I'm hopeful that we will get started on this coming Sunday until the church is finished. The, the guys uh, have really got to going down there and uh, the roof is being uh, fixed and uh, the shingles are being put on and what have you. I need you to stay tuned so that when 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 i get everything set up you can be meeting with us on sunday uh morning until the, until the church is finished uh you can meet with us on sundays at uh the union masonic temple on uh, hearn avenue that information will also be posted um i'm asking uh, rashida to post that information and uh, I'm, I'm hopeful that we will begin actually meeting on next Sunday. So that information will be posted. And uh, I will love to see your face there. Amen. Remember that our God said, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and uh, and and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Amen. Then will I hear from heaven and I will heal their land. God is ready to do all great things for you and for me. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. Give us day by day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who are indebted to us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God bless you and God keep you till we meet again. Amen.